آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا that he has created from amongst yourselves partners mates لتسكنوا إليها so you find tranquility together وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة and he instilled amongst you mercy and intimacy and if we look deep into that we find this is really one of the greatest blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that the relationship between husband and wife is very special nothing really compares to that those two people who were once strangers they would become closest they would become very close closer than anything else in fact they are the closest and the relationship is so special that even the parents the children is different everyone has a different level huh? of relationship and intimacy and love and so on but the husband and wife is so special that makes our life most of the time is so good and so tolerable and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also made this only through legal and halal marriage not through anything else anyone seeking huh, these through anything other than really true and halal marriage will never find it that marriage is the way to have stable families and stable societies and nations other than marriage adultery fornication any other relationship is doomed is meant to be a way of destruction of people of psychology of societies of emotions it's only through marriage and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that there is something behind this all and he said he has created the first man right who he has created you from one single soul خلقكم من نفس واحدة right Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala initially he did not create two he created one who is Adam and then he created his mate and he said from him وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا in one of the interpretations from physically from Adam huh? from Adam himself so the wife is created from the man from the living whereas Adam was created from clay that's why you find men more stubborn huh? you boys are tougher but girls and women are softer and meant to be like that if they're not like that huh? you will not find anyone to love you as much to care for us as much this is huh? one of the great wisdoms and blessings from Allah that your moms and daughters and sisters were uh, so uh, emotional and loving because they were created from a living <laughs> or oh, human and we were created from clay oh, this is my own huh? but it is so when you deal with them you need to take that into account they are so soft the Prophet وسلم, many times he said Allahumma Oh Allah be my witness I uh, bring my ummah's attention to the rights of the two weak parties the orphans and the women uh, the ladies the girls they are the two uh, weak wings of our societies because people think that orphan doesn't have a father to care for so some people may tend to exploit them and on the other hand also some people think women are not physically as strong and they may think they can abuse them 
But the Prophet sallallahu is warning us, be careful. The real man is the one who cares for these two, for the orphans and the women. And he said, whoever does good in that will be my partner in Jannah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Right? When he said, Ana wa kafilul yateen, he said, ah, I'll be with the carer of the orphan to gather in paradise. And he pointed with the two fingers. Huh? With the pointer and the middle. And he said that those who will care for their girls, huh? they will join me in paradise. So, family is a husband and wife. Nothing else, right? The family starts with a husband and wife. Not two husbands, not two wives, not uh, through legal and halal marriage. Anything else is fully rejected. We will not accept it. We will not legalize it. Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this is the only way for you to be satisfied and tranquil. Right? Because marriage is so important, because marriage is the foundation of our societies, of our nation, of our human family, starts with marriage. In fact, as we mentioned before, the single entity or the building brick of our societies is not the individual. Huh? It's the family. The families are, or a family is the building brick of any society. And if families are safe and healthy, the society will be safe and healthy. So the family is so important. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us so many guidelines to care for this family. And gave us so many recommendations uh, and advice to make sure this family is stable and uh, serving the purpose and bringing those two, the husband and wife, together to do their job willingly and comfortably. And he told us, you will expect also some differences. Hmm? You don't expect a family with no problems. Very few. Even the family of the Prophet ﷺ faced some problems, which we know in details, so we learn how to face such problems. When there is a difference in opinion. Huh? When someone wants more, like the, the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, once they, they thought they, they don't receive enough huh? of sustenance, of money and provisions, and they all asked for much more. And the Prophet ﷺ said, I don't have more. Well, then the, do you think any head of the states nowadays will do that? Usually the heads of the states have a lot. Huh? But the, this is Muhammad ﷺ. He's, he's telling us, he's giving us the example. So the Prophet ﷺ didn't have. He doesn't own the things. This belongs to the Ummah. So he's not going to give it out of his own. So he said, this is what I have. If you are satisfied, fine. If not, I'll divorce you and you will find your way. But they all chose to be with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of course. Yeah? Now, the family would face some turbulences sometimes. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is giving us many advice. And today we will tackle one only. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also elaborated in that. He said, let not... A believing woman hate her husband for one uh, bad manner. Because he may have other good, uh, some other good manners. And let not any man, believing man, hate his wife for one bad uh, behavior or bad manner of hers. Because she will have many other good ones. لا يكره مؤمن مؤمنة إذا كره منها خلق أعجبه خلق آخر. If he hates one man, he he will have many good other, right? And in fact, many people forget about that. Once the uh, the, the 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 wife will make a mistake, uh, it's the end of the world, <laughs> and the, the house will be turned up uh, upside down. Subhanallah. One bad moment, in turn, there are ten or a hundred huh, good days. 
and hours and our behaviors subhanallah there are people are different categories the first category of people people who are open-hearted well-versed and wise such people how they contribute to the welfare of their uh, family they will overlook the shortfalls they will even forget it if it comes from the husband or the wife the wife will overlook her husband's shortfalls and he will do the same for his wife if she makes one mistake he will only remember the good ones you're always late <laughs> everyone right say that you're always late we never go on time huh? you always uh, hesitant subhanallah you always miss it up always we always do that right we regularly do that we need to change we need to follow the sunnah and we need uh, to follow the recommendations allah said look for the good ones look for the good things huh? she's loving he's caring generosity kindness and of course kindness from the husband number one kindness is financial right because he's the one who provides for the family and it should be that Allah said spend from the provisions Allah gave you so the husband should bear that in mind the best thing you provide is what you provide for your family the best money you spend is what you spend in your house your wife and children and dependents the best sadaqa the Prophet وسلم, is what you spend on your children and your wife the best sadaqa you do it you have to do it but it's still sadaqa for you and it's the best you will do it and you will get reward for it so you spend according to your capacity so you should show kindness and in fact when the Prophet ﷺ was telling his wives about the story of Umm Zari this is the beautiful story in the Arabic heritage that this wife called Umm Zari she was praising her husband by saying the following when he comes home he's like huh a calm huh? cat <laughs> he's like, like like a cat so friendly and calm when he goes out he's a lion out not at home huh? he faces people like a man but he's home he's so nice and friendly huh? but some people do the opposite right they they lions at home and maybe they can't face people or say any word that it so, shouldn't be like that it's not like a troublemaker outside but you gotta be maybe stern strong but at home huh, he's calm and quiet and friendly right and he never questions what we consume food uh, money he leaves for us and things he never checks back on that because he's so generous he's so kind he doesn't check what was consumed and what is left always bringing always encouraging us to give giving us money so we can give in sadaqah and so on these are the great two traits of any husband that we should bear in mind and another consideration before we think of our wives we should think of ourselves someone wants his wife to be huh, the best in the world the most the wisest the most beautiful huh, the greatest first of all this never happens there is no such a person except in our imagination secondly are we the best and the wisest and the huh, the most no none of us is like that so why are we asking our wives to be like that in fact Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said something of importance he said he's the one who apportioned for you huh Allah is the one who apportioned for you so be happy of what Allah has given you don't look up for what he has given others some people don't appreciate what they have and they keep looking of what the neighbors what the friends what my colleagues have huh I never enjoy my money because I still think my colleague is getting more subhanallah and I still didn't even consume what I have <laughs> so I'm I'm not satisfied why because I think some people getting more 
I'm not satisfied with my husband because I think the next neighbors, whatever, is better. Or my wife, because someone is more beautiful, someone is wiser, someone is this. SubhanAllah said, لا تمدن عينيك إلى ما متعنا به أزواجا منهم. Don't look out for what Allah has given others. Because in fact, the first thing you have done is you overlooked what he has given you. When you look out, you, look, you overlooked what Allah has given you because you don't know what other people have. Maybe Allah gave them beauty, but he never gave him wisdom. Huh? Maybe Allah gave him money, but he didn't give them love. And you know about the story of the, uh, one of the greatest artists. He was in a concert with a princess. She's a beautiful princess. And he is very smart, but he, he wasn't really handsome. So she wanted to talk, but what she said, she said, oh, she, she said, oh, you know what, Mr. Such and Such, if we get married and we get a child, he's going to be as smart as you and as beautiful as me. Huh? The princess is telling him. So if we get married, we'll have a child as smart as you and as beautiful as me. So this guy is responding. He said, what if he comes as stupid as you are and as ugly as me? Huh? Allah gives people different things. If you always think of beauty, maybe the person who's got a lot of it, he didn't give any of the other or much less. Someone is getting a lot of money, but he doesn't have the brain to use it. There are many people who are getting much more than anyone, but they don't know how to use it. They don't even enjoy it in this world. They have not prepared for the, after, for the hereafter. So for the home, it's the same. It's the same. In fact, the king or the, whoever was looking, and he's asking his uh, assistant, who is the king? He said, you. He said, no. I'll show you the king. And he opened the window. And he looked at the person who is in the garden, the gardener, the person cleaning the garden, sitting there eating his lunch. He said, that is the king. He has peace of mind. Huh? So the real king, the real huh, successful person is the one who has peace of mind, who's happy with what Allah has given him. And he's more likely to have a wife that he's happy with and she's happy with him. This is the real happy person. Not necessarily to be a king or, or wealthy or whatever. No. Be satisfied of what Allah has given you. Eat and say Alhamdulillah and you're happy. What else? You eat the meal, they eat the meal. You eat this, you drink that, they will do the same. If they have a thousand times of what you have, you still eat the same amount. You still spend the same moments. You still have your wife and children and so on. Your house that has two rooms is exactly the same of the one that has 20 or 50 rooms. You will only occupy one, right? So in the family needs huh, people to win it and care for it according to that recommendations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet. So if you find something that you don't like, overlook that, pass it. In fact, such people are the happiest. The other category of people, people who are tit for tat. Huh? If, if they do good, I will do good. If they hurt, I will respond the same. This is not huh, a recipe for a happy life. Not even for friends. What about that? Huh? Wife and the husband. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ said, the best of the people who tolerates the people, it's to mix with the people and tolerate their harm is better than abandoning them. Right? It's better than abandoning people is to live with them, mix with them, and then bear any harm that could possibly hurt you from them. And who, is, who deserves that more than your immediate and closest, your wife and your husband? This is a recipe for success. Recipe for success is look for the good things. Look for the good things. I'll finish with this. One person is 
is telling you is your wife working no no she's not working she's doing home duties she's at home oh you she's not doing anything uh, said oh, okay um, do you cook your food no 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 my wife does do you wash your things no my wife does do you clean the house no my wife does right you take care of the kids homeworks and duties and schooling no 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 my wife does but she's not working you know she's idle she's sitting at home right uh, do you prepare the thing no 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 she's my wife but she's not working really what about you oh i do work yes from eight o'clock to four o'clock and then what after that then i go home tired and who prepares your food my wife does and who takes care of the kids my wife does the one who's not working the wife who is not working, huh? then when does she go to sleep? Oh, after I go to sleep and all the kids go to sleep and so on. So she goes to sleep at uh, midnight and she wakes up at four o'clock in the morning and she's still idle, doesn't do any work, right? And that is our wives and our moms, right? They're idle, they're not doing any work. We are doing work. So we work eight hours in the day and we are consumed and exhausted and we go home, uh, we want to relax. And she works 18 hours a day, right? And she doesn't deserve even 30 or 21 days of leave in the year, which we uh, look for. Isn't it that? How fair is that? Then when she makes one meal that's lacking something, then, She's always missing up food. Huh? When she doesn't finish the dishes or the laundry, huh? she's lazy or so on. Right? Isn't that, does it make sense? These are the ones who are not working. What if she's working and she's still doing that? She's working and still doing all of that. In fact, that means she's much stronger than us much more capable than us that deserves in return huh? isn't ihsan the least in return for ihsan yes indeed may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, fill our homes with love and tranquility and peace allahumma ameen may allah fill this land with safety and peace and all the muslim land may allah help our brothers in syria and iraq and in yemen and in palestine and all around ameen ya rabbal alameen wa sallallahu wa barik ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in